Hey guys, Heather Nichols here for Ace Universe, and we have a very special guest here today. She is the first person to ever portray Ms. Marvel on screen, and that is the beautiful and talented Sandra Saad. Sandra, thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, Heather. Thanks for having me. Of course. So I know Kamala Khan has such an amazing backstory and many of our fans are just huge comic book junkies. So uh, they probably know a lot about, you know, her in the comics and her experience in the Ms. Marvel series or Captain Marvel series rather before she uh, graduated to her own series. And I know that Kamala's backstory has maybe a few similarities to yours. Is that is that correct? Can you talk about your connection to the character? To my personal uh, connection? Yeah. 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 Um, she is a first generation American like myself. Uh, she's really cute and spunky like myself. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. And yeah, I think there's like our personalities are pretty similar. Like I get really, really excited really fast. And so does she. Um, and there's nothing like a true fangirl, right? Like she's right. a big Avengers fangirl. And so am I. But I'm also a right. fangirl of like a zillion other things. So yeah, it's sure. really easy to relate to her. <laughs> oh, that's so awesome. Well, I think you were just meant for this role, which is always a great thing when you're able to find that perfect fit like that. Um, well, as the first person to portray her on screen, did you feel any added pressure or was it more just excitement about being able to kind of put your stamp on this character? Yeah, there was definitely, <clears throat> excuse me, there was definitely some pressure at the beginning, right? Because I was like, there's no way that I'm in the Marvel universe right now. Um, it took me a really long time to kind of like get over that, <laughs> just like my personal like fangirliness. Um, sure. But as soon as I was like, okay, set in reality, then I was like, all right, well, how do we make this story our own, right? Because yeah. while I am, you know, the first to portray Miss Marvel on screen, <clears throat> um, we do have our own really nice story. So yeah. it, it it's pretty different from the comics and I'm sure it's going to be pretty different from, you know, the show and if she yeah. ends up in the movies or whatever. And so I think that's what made it really nice for me is having those conversations um, with our director, Shauna Sky about our own story and how to make her uh, the Crystal Dynamics version, you know, sure. for Malacan. Yeah. Oh, well, you're doing a great job. So <laughs> congratulations <laughs> on all the success so far. Um, so what was your reaction like when you first saw the character on the screen? Oh man, I remember the first time they showed me our like one of our scenes kind of put together because they knew that I would be really excited. So they're like, okay, sure. well, it's not done yet. Like, uh, but it was, I think, the first scene that I did with Troy Baker, um, the one where uh, she wakes up in his lab. Spoilers. <laughs> um, <laughs> Spoiler alert. Not really. It's, it's yeah. not a big deal. But, um, I I freaked out, man. I was like, oh my gosh, look at her little bracelets clanking. Look at her boots clanking on the ground and seeing everything put together and just how my facial expressions are on this character's face and like watching all of Troy's really, really subtle um, movements and everything. It was really special. And yeah. man, I cried <laughs> as soon as I saw it. So it was really nice. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my gosh. What an amazing experience. I mean, I think everybody kind of has this dream of being a cartoon or, you know, being an animated character like that. So, so amazing. That's so cool. Um, so it kind of maybe worked out in a weird sort of way because the game came out in September, right? Yeah. September 4th. Yeah. So it came out when everybody's stuck at home and has time to play. So <laughs> what's the reaction you've been getting so far from, from fans? Everyone finished playing it so fast. Not everyone, but a lot of fans like, I was so impressed. Uh, fans yeah. would hit me up like the day after the game came out and they're like, hey, I just played through the campaign. I was like, oh my goodness. How? How? I'm still stuck playing, you know, Hulk on the bridge. Like I can't get <laughs> off that bridge. Uh, so I'm really impressed by all of the gamers yeah. out there these days. I'm not very much of a gamer, but yeah, you guys are, you guys are impressive. There's some dedication out there, I think. Yeah. Um, it's pretty amazing. So I know you've been really kind of selective on the roles that you've chosen to take on. And I've, I've heard you mention before too, that your mom kind of had her say too on, on some of the roles that you've maybe chosen to do or not to do. So what was it about this opportunity that you really felt was the right fit? Yeah, my mom and I are pretty tight. Uh, <laughs> but I think the reason kind of I, I, I have needed to go to my mom with all of these roles is because oftentimes like 
the script will be in Arabic or I'll need to translate stuff. Yeah. And um, she she'd help me with it. But uh, yeah, I, of course, would get her opinion really quick uh, sure. when she would need to help me translate. But um, this role is nothing like anything I've ever auditioned for. I mean, yeah. she's a superhero. And right. Like she's innately good and she yeah. is like a full person. She's like a full dimensional character, like, you know, a three dimensional character. And yeah. Um, yeah, it's she's not like a trope. She's not like a diversity checkbox. She's nothing like that. She's right. like a full on person and she's a superhero and she's an inhuman and she's got like an amazing family and she gets to meet yeah. her, her like heroes. So there's nothing that I ever questioned about this role. My mom was sure. like, you're going to be a character in a video game. And I was like, yeah, th things have really changed since like Sonic the Hedgehog in the 90s. Right. It's kind of a big deal now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty cool. Especially an Avengers video game. Even better. Yeah. So what what has she seen the footage from the game? What does she think about how the characters progress? Yes, we love watching the cinematic scenes together because like, I don't know, I'm not, my mom used to play a lot, like when I was a baby. Really? She used to, yeah, oh. she just told me this like a month okay. ago. I was like, mom, cool. like, okay. yeah, right? Um, so, but now I feel like now things have changed so much or like, or I just don't want to lose to my mom. So like, we haven't <laughs> played together. So I'm like, we'll just watch the cinematic scenes. And she's like, yeah. But can I play? And I'm like, well, we'll figure that out later. We'll figure it out later. But not, right. Been, not right now. I don't want to lose to you. Um, but we watched the cinematic scenes together and her reactions have been really, really funny. I oh wish like gosh. I could tape them, but she's yeah. she's really loved it. She's like, oh. yeah, that's totally you. That's totally oh, the that's way so that cool. you wobble. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Cause you did motion capture, right? It wasn't just voiceover. Okay. Yeah. There's definitely some scenes where uh, you could, I, I mean, like sometimes when I run, if I'm not paying attention, then I like, I wobble a little bit and she, she's very quick to point it out. She's like, yeah, that's oh. definitely mm -hmm. the way that you run. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks mom. Yes. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks so much. So as a first generation American, what does, you know, kind of the rest of your family think of all the success and attention that you've been getting from, from this role specifically? It's interesting, right? Like, uh, the definition of success hits people like differently, right? For right. me, I'm like, oh my God, I'm in the Marvel universe. Like for me, that's, that's success. And, yep. but you know, to some people it's an LA times article and to some people sure. it's the Washington post article. And to some people it's like, yeah. you know, being on CNN or whatever. And yeah, like, it's just been interesting to see like the different people's um, reactions to different like articles yeah. that have come out or whatever. But mm -hmm. um, my family in Egypt has been really, really on board with it and uh, has has been kind of like trying to follow all of the articles that come out. Like they'll send me stuff before I even know that it's out. Oh, that's so cool. You've got your little yeah. army out there keeping an eye out for you. I know, I love it. I'm so lucky. <laughs> oh, that's so great. Well, I'm sure that makes it even more fulfilling to have, you know, all of that support around you, which is so awesome. Yeah. Um, so how has how has this experience been different? I know you voiced a few different games. You did Call of Duty Modern Warfare, right? Yeah. Okay. So how how is that experience different from this one? Um, <laughs> this is, I mean, like, this is an Avengers project. So it's, a lot, it's like, yeah. it's very fun as opposed sure. to like, uh, warfare, <laughs> right? Right. Right. Uh, Dif and also, yeah, different subject matter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. Um, a, a lot less like trudging in the mind, I feel, but sure. but still like this is my first time really um, playing a, a lead character. And right. also this is my first time doing mocap. Um, okay. And so, oh my gosh, it's it's been so different from like any other game I've ever done. Just the mocap, like getting to yeah. act in front of another person. Um, is really, right. really special as opposed to, you know, like sometimes an ADR or like, you know, in like animation or whatever, like you'll have the other actors around you, but yeah. there's only so much like turning and looking at the other person you can do and like, yeah. you know, you're supposed to stay on mic or whatever, but um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been really cool. Like the, the whole, like, you know, first generation American lead and amongst like 
I don't know, like Troy Baker and Nolan yeah. North. Like it's a big deal. Pretty good, good company. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, well, I watched uh, your interview on Fat Man Beyond with Kevin Smith, which is so funny. Um, and he, <laughs> I think you you mentioned that you you started working on this in like 2018. Is that, is yeah. that correct? Gosh, Spring so you've been doing this for like. You've been doing this for a minute then. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. What, what, so what was the time frame? Like, what were you actually doing kind of during that time? Did you keep having to go back and do more motion capture? Were you doing voiceover or did you just kind of do your stuff and then let the powers that be do their thing? Um. Well, first of all, like, I love Kevin Smith. Right. So, so like, getting to be on his show, I was like, ah! <laughs> So amazing. Um, we had him at a guest at, at one of our A shows too, and he's hilarious. Yeah, and so supportive. As soon as I got off, I kept watching, and he was like, "Man, that girl's got a career ahead of her." I was like, "Yeah." Anyway, um, uh, um, 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 I had the answer to your question, but then I forgot your question. Oh, sorry. No, I was just kind of wondering what, how, if you had kept having to go back for more sessions of motion oh, capture, yeah. if you were doing voiceover, or if you were just kind of able to do your thing and let it be. Um. So for the first. I would say like year, year and a half, it was mocap, 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 mocap. Okay. Um, and then like some ADR sessions started getting thrown in there. And then it mm -hmm. was a lot of ADR. Um, gotcha. Like usually for mocap, it's everybody. Um, so I got to work with like ev like most cast members on that mocap stage. Oh, cool. It's really cool, right? And then um, oh, so ADR, fun. it's generally uh, just me alone and then like the the – you know, director and a couple other folks behind the glass. Sure. Yeah. Awesome. Well, we actually got a couple of fan questions, so yeah. we will jump into those. So I'm going to put them on the screen here so you'll be able to follow along. So Jerron Williams said, big fan, first of all. Uh, uh, he wants to know what it was like voicing an Avenger. It must be some awesome shoes to fill. Yes, big shoes, big embiggened shoes for sure. Um let me tell you, it, it was really cool. Like we said earlier, there's nothing like playing, like not only a person with like good morals and, yeah. you know, like the Avengers have their own issues and, and every every single Avenger has like a problem. And that's the, the cool thing about them, right? Is they're not perfect, yeah. um, but still they're always out for the good and to like overcome these issues that they have um so it was really cool kind of like diving into um what might be like kamala's insecurities or you know yeah. the things about her that make her different um and kind of embracing those you know differences as it were so uh yeah pretty darn cool joran <laughs> long story short it was awesome yeah it was awesome <laughs> So Josh Hington wants to know, he says, hey, Sandra, which of Ms. Marvel's superpowers would you like to have in your own life? Hey, Josh. Um, <laughs> well, I think so. I think her perseverance is my favorite superpower of hers. And like, you know, she and Biggins, she's an actual polymorph. She has like actual superpowers. But yeah. I think her perseverance is very very powerful and i would choose that over anything um she's not a quitter there's right. a lot of things especially in this game that you see you know come in her way and there's a lot of moments where you're like okay girl let's just go just pack it up and go home um right. but she doesn't she's not yeah. that kind of person she keeps going and she believes in what she believes in with such fierceness and um mm -hmm. yeah I, I like i have a little bit of that but I feel like everybody could really use that extra Kamala perseverance. Totally. Love that. Good choice. <laughs> so <laughs> Melanie Garcia wants to know, did you have a favorite superhero growing up? If so, who and why? Okay. Every time I ask this question, it changes. So bear <laughs> with me. Okay. Um, but growing up, the answer is Spider-Man. Um, okay. Like, I talk about this shirt all the time and I've never like worn it in an interview before, but this is a Spider-Man so comic book panel. Um, oh, I love I, it. I bought it when I was, I think in high school when like, okay. uh, I don't know. I like one of the Spider-Man movies came out and sure. I was obsessed. I'd walk around going, <laughs> you know, um, and 
Yeah, I think like the fact that he he was also like in high school and he was like 16 and spunky um, was really cool for me. Yeah, Yeah. it's relatable, especially, you know, like I was 16, too. Um, Sure. So but of course now Kamala is my favorite because I mean, hi. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, hi. Um, And for me, she's that much more relatable because also she's like a girl and like she's not, you know, like when you watch like girl movies and like you know girl characters like they're not often like very like she's like really really fierce so for me i love her a lot (laughs) i think that's fair (laughs) yeah so uh just a couple more questions before we wrap up so you have a band right like you're not just Mm. like a video game voiceover person you're like a musician too so it's called (laughs) eye of the sun right oh you know yes yes i mean eye of the sun okay um yeah i uh so like i started out doing like just like film and tv auditioning and stuff and then yeah voiceover kind of came around around the same time that i booked this job so um so yeah like voiceover is just like like a unicorn thing for me but i've always kind of been a musician as well i sing primarily in this in especially in this um in this project uh, okay. and it's a two person psychedelic folk band and I love it so much. That is so cool. Well, I know yeah. you guys haven't been able to perform probably in a minute because of the world shutting down. Um, but have you been able to still kind of work on music during, during quarantine? Yeah. Um, my okay. bandmate is like very, 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 very quarantined. And so am I. Okay. Um, yeah. And we're best friends. And so it's, oh, a, that's great. Like I said, it's a two person band and um, yeah. we've been working on our album during quarantine and that's been really nice um and our ep is set to release in the beginning of next year so keith and i (laughs) exciting well what were some of your kind of musical inspirations so my musical inspirations for this band um brandon and my inspirations for this band Uh have been there was this band called fawn fables and they're Mm -hmm. also like pretty folky and they're a two-person band as well um we love them so much and we used to go to their shows all the time and we met them and like now they're good friends of ours and uh that's really cool um we also like this band called dengue fever that's like a 60s psychedelic cambodian band and uh so uh, aside from like these wonderful bands that like you may have not heard of um i really really like of course zeppelin of course frank zappa and also jack white I love him so much. <laughs> yep. Who doesn't? Um, <laughs> so aside from the EP, is there anything else fans should kind of be on the lookout for? Do you have any other kind of projects that you're working on right now? I know everything's kind of on pause at the moment. Everything's definitely on pause. Um, be out for the EP. That's the one thing that okay. like we're really working you on can right still now. still do. Yeah, yeah, I'm like putting together a stand up set right now. And what a weird time to do stand up. I, I like I was talking to Kevin Smith about it. He's like, what? <laughs> um, but so yeah, I'm working on that and like working on some other uh, projects that are not like fully complete yet. So for now, look out for that album. Okay. Do you want to tell everybody your social handles where they can find you online so they can keep an eye out for updates? Yes. Um, if you want to look up my Instagram or Twitter, it's Sandra Ramsey Sad, Sandra R A M Z Y S A A D. And uh, my band, uh, we're on Facebook and Instagram at Eye of the Sun. Cool. Well, awesome. This was so much fun. I'm so excited to meet you. I'm so happy for all of your success. It's so amazing. Thank you so much for being here today. Thanks, Heather. Nice to meet you. (laughs) You too. And fans out there, if you guys want to get in on the upcoming signing with Sandra, visit acecomicon.com. You can submit your item through one of our send-in partners, or you can find a new one and Sandra will sign it for you. So thank you guys so much for joining us today. We'll see you soon. Bye.